throughout the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible, there are many references to justice. In Psalm 82, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice to the faith fatherless, and plead the widow's cause. The call for justice and basic human rights is rooted in the idea that humans are created in the image of God, which means they are inherently valuable. In the Old Testament, justice is described as a core attribute of God. The Israelites are called to remember their time of slavery in Egypt and to do justice in their own lives and communities. For instance, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of Lord, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing amongst you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Justice was also a core component of the laws of the people of Israel. Do not take advantage of a hired worker who is poor or needy, whether that worker is a fellow Israelite or a foreigner residing in one of your towns. Pay them their wages each day before sunset because they are poor and are counting on it. Otherwise, they may cry to the Lord against you, and you will be guilty of sin. Tikkun Olam is literally is a world repairing the world, is a concept in Judaism, which refers to various forms of action intended to repair and improve the world. The earliest use of the term tikkun olam comes in the phrase menepe tikkun olam for the sake of repairing the world. In the modern era, tikkun olam has come to refer to the suit of social justice based on the idea that Jews bear responsibility not only for their own moral, spiritual and material welfare, but also for the welfare of society at large. One who brought their field from a non-Jew must bring home the first fruits from that field and give a reasonable share of that to the seller. Perhaps the call for justice is best expressed by the prophet Micah, who summarised the requirements of God into three points. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love tenderly and to walk humbly with your God. Amongst modern liberal movements, a common but more modern understanding of this phrase is that we share a partnership with God and are instructed to take steps towards improving the state of the world and helping others, which simultaneously brings more honour to God's sovereignty. Over the course of Jewish intellectual history, at times referred to eschatological concerns and at times to practical concerns. But in either context, it refers to some kind of change, social change, or process that is for the betterment of society or humanity or the world. Now, peace. In the Old Testament, shalom is more than the absence of conflict. It represents the ideal state God intended from creation. It's about completeness, health, prosperity and harmony. This positive peace involved well-being and tranquility in relationships between people, nations 
and God. The following well-known words, set beautifully by John Rutter amongst many, actually comes from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace comes from trusting God, obeying his commands and having a good relationship with him. Verses like Isaiah 26, 3 and Exodus 14, 14 show this. Not having peace is a sign of disobeying God and leads to bad things like war, suffering, and being apart from God. For peace, we should trust God, follow his ways, stand out for, our, for what's right, and remember peace comes from God, not our situations. God wants to bless his people with peace. Sadly, verses like the following can be taken as triumphalism for the Jewish people alone. I will give you peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the swords will not go through your land. How sad that that land, sacred to three great religions, who all use essentially the same greeting, Shalom Aleichem, Salem Aleichem, or, as we say here in the UK, peace be with you, is locked in a conflict which does not seem to be coming to an end. I will end with Psalm 71. And perhaps you will all like to say it with me. O oh God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. In his days justice shall flourish, and peace till the moon fails. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the great river to earth's bound. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are helpless. He shall have pity on the weak, and save the lives of the poor. May his name be blessed forever, and jewel like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed on him. All nations bless his name. Baruch blessed be he. Thank you so much, Brian. Blessed be you for getting up so quickly. Don't get old. Ha, <laughs>